Hi, I'm Rachel. I go to Oxford University, St Anne's College, and I study history. Well, um, to point out the obvious, um, it's Oxford. Um, I loved the course there. I knew I wanted to do history, so I looked at all the courses. I looked at Oxford and Cambridge. I decided I liked the Oxford one more. Um, and I had gone to Oxford quite a bit. Um, just because it's quite close to where I live and easy to get to so it's quite a nice day trip and it's a lovely city so kind of a no-brainer. I think the most um, the most I did in deciding was which college and I just kind of randomly did that. I went up for the open day, looked at quite a few and decided on St Anne's because well I did, my middle name's Anne, looked quite nice, and the rest is history. Um, I always knew I wanted to do history, mostly just because it was the subject I enjoyed most at school. Um, I did it for GCSE, then I did it for A-level, and then I decided I liked it the best out of all my A-levels. I toyed with doing it with one of my other ones, so maybe history and politics, history with French, but then I looked at the courses offered and I decided I just wanted to do straight history. Um, good decision. Yep, enjoyed it. Love it. Keep going. <laughs> um, so I'm in my third year, final year, um, and loved the course. It's been great. Um, it's very independent. You have to do a lot of, you know, all the work on your own. There's very few contact hours. So, I mean, it depends on the module, but um, for a lot of my um, modules, I had one tutorial a week and one essay a week. So I spent the majority of my week reading, writing the essay on my own, and then have an hour, hour and a half with my tutor to go over it. So that'd be one hour. There were lectures, didn't really go to them. They were, I didn't find them that useful, but if you did go to them, there were two a week-ish for that module. Um, for other modules, you did classes. So some weeks I'd have class and a tute um, so that would be three hours it's, it's a very independent course history and Oxford just in general is quite independent unless you do the sciences in which case you get a lot of lectures and more spoon fed to you but I think Oxford they're encouraging you to think for yourself and to work for yourself hold on I'm going to drink some tea in my Oxford mug Okay, um, the workload. Yeah, the workload is actually not as bad as I thought it would be. You go in with all these preconceptions about, you know, how much you're going to be working, but actually you can, once you get into it, kind of whittle it down and you can be doing an essay in three days, three, four days, which take, means you can take the rest of the week off. For other courses, like law or medicine or you know, some of the more heavier um, stuff, and then you can't really, I mean you can, don't get me wrong, you can definitely take time off, but um, I think there is definitely room to manoeuvre more with history or say other subjects that don't have quite as much content or time around them. So when I applied to Oxford, I didn't actually necessarily want to go. Um, I applied to Oxford, Durham, UCL, Warwick and Exeter. Um, I got into all of them except Durham, which is the one that I really wanted to go to. Um, and I kind of applied assuming uh, to Oxford, assuming I wouldn't get in. Um, lucky I did, <laughs> lucky me. Um, but yeah, so I chose my universities based on the course mainly. Um, I looked at a few others, um, like, oh, I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, so I looked at a few others, but I settled on those five because of the course. Um, I really went into detail when I was looking at them, looking at the, all the modules and how it was all weighted out, when the exams were how much my final degree, I mean, you really don't have to go into this much detail, but 
since most places doing this studio had to whittle them down somehow. Um, I thought Warwick had a really nice degree. Exeter just looked really nice, had a good course. Um, UCL, I was a bit in two minds about UCL because I loved the course firstly, but I didn't want to live at home. Um, so I was kind of, I applied still because it was great, great uni. But um, yeah, anyway. Um, then Durham, I just really loved the course. I'd been a couple of times, it'd been sunny. And I know it's not sunny all the time in Durham, but it was sunny. I loved the course. I loved the town. Just a little amazing. But I didn't get in. And I got into Oxford. So. I love the town. I love Oxford. It's so pretty. And you feel like you're in a fairy tale or Harry Potter. Or just in a medieval novel somewhere every time you go into town. I'm really lucky the History Faculty Library is in the Radcliffe camera, that big dome thing. That one. Um, so, I mean, you get to go to this massive building that was built, I don't know when, but a long time ago and it's just so pretty and every time you even go to Tesco, it's like insane. Um, so yeah, that's a nice part of the town. It's also pretty much got everything you need. It's got a massive shopping center, which is dangerous for the old bank account um, and it's got huge Tesco, huge Sainsbury's, it's got everything, it's got loads of cinemas, it's got tons of coffee shops, that's nice, loads of nice restaurants, it's just a really nice place to be, it's quite, so for me, I'm from London, it feels like quite a small, small town and you can get around everywhere really, really easily and you can walk most places or cycle, a lot of people cycle, I cycled quite a bit um but for others it feels quite big if you come from the countryside so it's quite a nice balance between small and but big enough that you don't feel you know like you need to get out and do other things yes so much to do outside the university there are hundreds of extracurricular things to do in oxford um i'd say it's quite daunting. I mean, when you go to any university and you get there and there's a freshers fair and you have to, you know, focus on what you want to do and you don't know what you want to do because you've just got to university, you're trying to balance, you know, work, moving from home, making friends and then deciding if you want to do anything else. I know I didn't do anything in first year, anything extracurricular, just because I was trying to settle in, make friends and get through the work. Um, but when I started, Excuse me, when I started um, doing extra stuff in second and third year, I realised that you definitely can do other things. Um, you just need, need to make time of it for it and manage your time better. Um, but anyway, no, there's loads of things to do. There's, I mean, I personally did student journalism and um, I worked a bit with RAG and the charity. Um, and I mean, there's just so many things you can do. And the nice thing about Oxford is that there's colleges. So even if you don't want to do something that's university wide, like a sport, you can do sport with your college. So I did college netball, college rowing, and it's so like chill. And you can definitely do it without being stressed out or think you're too unfit, because I definitely am unfit. But still you can get involved and do things on a nice like calm scale rather than, <clears throat> you know, trying out for a university team is scary. It's nice to be able to do something on a you know low key scale, um, and apart from sport, there's so many so many drama things, and it's even if you don't get involved in drama, it's quite nice to go and watch them. I have a friend who's in like two plays a term, two three plays a term, so that's really nice, and they're really cheap. Um, oh, plus we have the Ashmolean and a couple of nice galleries and stuff, so that's nice. And yeah, there's like there's so many things to do. It's Everyone is so, I don't know what the word is, like buzzing to do things. So I actually quite like the nightlife. I'm not the biggest clubbing person. I like it once in a while because it's quite fun to dance and, you know, let yourself go. But I mean, it's not the best. Like if you go and visit other unis like Newcastle, Leeds, they have 
an amazing night knife and I think maybe I'd want to go out a bit more if it was a bit more like that. I say that, probably not. But okay, it's not awful in Oxford. We have seven clubs, I think. Um, some are better than others. Um, I really like two of them and I'll go to them without any complaining. Um, but it's not always clubbing, like there are so many other things to do. Like there are open mic nights, loads of bars, there's like, I can't think right now, but comedy shows as I was saying, plays and all the sorts and house parties because a lot of people live out and those are much more fun than clubbing in my opinion. Um, I'm trying to think, it's been a while since I've been out, I'm a third year. Um, oh and crew dates, oh crew dates are fun. So, oh, that's one thing I'd say. If you are going to Oxford, learn all the lingo before you get there, because otherwise you'll have to learn like a whole other language and it's just like an added bit of stress. But anyway, so part of the nightlife. Crew dates, I mean, all these Oxford things like crew dates, balls, formals, so much fun, first of all. Um, so crew dates are when you, one team or group, so say the St. Anne's Netball Club, they date another crew from a different college, usually if the a different sex so say the Pembroke men's football team which is what we did last term very fun we'll go to a restaurant have dinner but it's quite rowdy and very fun um, and then balls major event of the season it's all been cancelled this year which is so sad but um, quite expensive but you really get your money money's worth everyone dresses up you go with your friends it goes until like four in the morning they're amazing formals are less you know Fancy, but they're just a very nice dinner at college and you can go to other colleges for formal and it's just a really nice time and you get to dress up and all that and usually sometimes oh and college bars I'm remembering all the nightlife now college bars so all colleges have bars they have a JCR and that's quite a nice place to pre or just have a drink with your friends even if you're not going out um, and they're usually quite cheap because college subsidizes them um, so I'd say the nightlife is good. It's not as bad as people think. Um, and there are lots of things to do, even if you don't want to go out, out. Um, but if you do go out, out, it's not awful. And oh, one thing I would say is Brooks nights are usually better than Oxford nights. So if you're going to Park End, go on a Monday. And that's all I'll say on that. <laughs> Last year was a long time ago. Um, Last year was really good. Um, I think while I was doing it, I was a kind of in a haze where I just felt you've got to get through, just keep working, just carry on, it's all going to be fine. Um, looking back, it was a big adjustment. Um, I didn't take a gap year, so I went straight from school. Um, and I mean, I'm a fairly independent person, but I still felt that moving out was a big step. I remember driving into college on the first day and I've never felt so sick just because I felt really nervous. Um, but once you get settled in and you once you've made friends, I think that's quite a nice thing. Even if they're only freshers friends, isn't you know, freshers weak friends, it's still nice to know people and to go to dinner with people because then you feel like you're more at home. And I made some amazing friends in Freshers Week that I still am friends with. And I made some friends throughout the year, I made some friends last year, and so it's not like you have to make friends in the first week um, but so first year was good I had exams at the end of first year so I think that kind of the knowledge that I had exams probably made me work a bit harder than I needed to and looking back I definitely didn't need to spend my entire time working I don't think I did but I also don't think I took the time off that I didn't spend the time that I took off well um, so I just lay in my room and watch movies, which maybe I needed at the time, but looking back I could have done so much more. I could have gone and joined a society or something and done something productive, but oh well. Watched a lot of good TV. All the people were lovely. Oh, I miss college. Um, I think college life is really nice, because once you get to university you don't have the daunting task of trying to get to know everyone in the university um, and you kind of have a starting point in college 
obviously don't have to stay within college to make your friends and all that and live your life but to have that as a kind of starting point it's a nice community and when you get there there are freshers helpers the JCR committee and they all just make you feel really at home which is really really nice and it is kind of it is a home away from home so that's it's lovely um, and the tutors oh my god I mean I went and I thought I'm never gonna I'm never gonna get used to going to see one of these Oxford Dons and these professors and I'm terrified I was terrified the first time I met them and for my first year I was still terrified mostly because I didn't really understand what was going on but after that and now I they're so lovely and they just want to help you and it's just like you're I miss them. Hmm. Sorry, back to the point. Um, no, everyone's so lovely in college and in the university, and they're so helpful. I think my favourite thing are the people. Is that really lame? I <laughs> I love my friends, and I don't think I would have been able to do the amount of work and kept in high spirits without them. <laughs> they're wonderful. I think the nicest thing is just being able to walk around Oxford and do nice things like go to the pub. <laughs> like going to the pub with your friends. That's my favourite thing about uni. Going to the pub with my friends. I wouldn't say I get too affected by work pressure, exam pressure. But if I had to say what's my least favourite thing about university it is the constant deadlines. Um, there is a sense when you get to the end of term that you're just working to get through it. You're not working because you love it anymore. It's just like you've got to get to the last deadline because then you can finally relax. And that's a bit like... Mm. But it's not that I hate it. I mean, I, re I love my degree and I do really enjoy it. But at times it's just like there's so much work to do that you can't fully let your hair down. The language, well, it's not that much of a language, it's just like silly words like bops and crude apes and subfusk. And even the names of the terms are weird, Michaelmas and Hillary and Trinity, I mean, come on. But equally, you pick it up very quickly and everyone talks with the lingo, so you get that. Um, I think one thing would be nice to know before I went to Oxford is that you don't need to hit the ground running. A lot of people think that you need to excel as soon as you get there. You need to get a first in prelims, you need to get a first in all your essays, otherwise you're failing. No. Like, I needed time to settle in. I wish I'd known that. And I wish that I hadn't worked so hard in first year because I didn't need to. I just needed, I think time made me better at work than anything else, just because I I got to know how I worked and how things worked for me and so that was I think if I was going to say anything to first year me is just enjoy yourself a bit more and let the work adapt to you or you adapt to the environment or whatever I'm trying to say but basically you don't need to excel in first year. <laughs> you definitely don't. Some people need to adapt to the situation they're in, some others don't, some others just do excel because they're geniuses but others I think you just need to calm down and accept that you are in an intensely intense environment well how much free time do I have I usually have quite a bit of free time um, since I don't have many contact hours but technically if I since I do have quite a bit of a week off um, I just have to manage my time really well because otherwise I will take four days off and go shopping and do nice things instead of working. Um, but yeah, the thing about history is that you have to self-motivate intensely um, because you still do need to write an essay, you still do need to do that reading, you still do need to do all that work, but it's on your own time. So technically I've got a lot of free time, but I don't. But if I do, you know, manipulate my time 
and say, okay, these three days I'm gonna take off and do other stuff, such as a sport or whatever, then you can take time off. It just, I think with my kind of degree and any humanities degree, you have to compartmentalize your life. <laughs> but, so how much free time do I have? Like enough. I can take the evening off and go to formal. I can take the evening off and go out. I can then take the next day off if I want to be hung hungover. It just depends on how much you organise your time. And a lot of people have more free time than others because they can work quicker or they work differently. A lot of people have a lot more contact hours, so they have less time um, in the evenings, but then they have fewer hours in the library. So it, it's all, all juggling about, isn't it? <laughs> I miss my accommodation. So I'm in third year, I finally got an ensuite. And it was lovely for the first two terms. And I've got to tell you, I miss my shower. I do. Um, <laughs> so in first year, I had a very big room actually. Um, I had a share a bathroom and a toilet, but that was fine. It's quite nice to get to know your house. Um, I was lucky my college offered accommodation all three years, so um, I've lived in college, haven't had to live out. Um, I think I probably would have liked to live out if I was doing it again, um, just because my friends who are at different unis or different colleges, their um, houses have seemed like a lot of fun, to be honest. Um, but equally, it was nice not to have to go through that stress because I've heard it's quite stressful. Um, second year was, oh, second year was the best actually. I was in um, <laughs> one of the ugliest buildings in college, but I'd say it was better to be in than out. Um, I had my own sink, which was actually lovely. Um, and that was actually such a, such a good year, because I had, we all were on one floor, all some of us on this side facing the quad, and we had a, ba I had a balcony to sit out on it. It was lovely, greenery everywhere. Ooh good times um, and this year yeah it's been lovely sad I'm not going back really 